Gardens this morning, defender Becky Sauerbrunn has at least one more year with the team. Well, the, the Thorns US made National some news today as well. They've added some international experience to their roster. They've signed Japanese midfielder Hina Sugita to a three-year deal. Too because Janine Becky, a 27-year-old Canadian striker, signed a three-year contract to play the WSL season with a new general manager, head coach, and some changes to the roster. I just read this quote and it's really stuck with me and essentially what it means is that when we have expectations or ambitions that we're always striving for something we want more and nothing's ever satisfying and when we're content and embracing the journey and learning and growing then when something like this happens it's profound enduring it's surprising but it's also just like so much joy because you arrived at a point where you didn't expect it but it happened because you did all the right things and that's what this team did this year we did all the right things and showed up for each other and learned and and went through hard times with a lot of growth but then you know we got to discover the joy of arriving when that final whistle blew to start. We underwent some changes with the staff and obviously new head coach, a new GM, but the DNA of the Thorns hasn't changed. One thing that this club has always done well is it has the unique ability to build for now, like to have a always a competitive team now, while at the same time thinking about three, four, five years down the road. And I look at some of the young players we have now, like Soph, obviously, like a Sam Coffee, like it. It's incredible that what the future will hold for these players and this club. This team is a very special group, and I've played on a lot of teams. Everyone seems to genuinely like to be around each other, and there's such a respect and camaraderie that I think is really rare in this game. We all trust each other. We all can have open conversations with each other. We've had a hard year, and I think the hard year has brought us even closer together. I think sometimes I have to like remind myself of like who I'm sitting next to every day. The vets, the younger players, the staff. So coming into that was definitely intimidating at first and just like, whoa, uh, like how do I fit in here? And I think one of the things I love most about the Thorns and just about our team is just how supportive everybody is. And from the minute I got here, I felt like I was being lifted up by the people around me and that they infused confidence in me that I didn't really have when I first got here, you know, and so when you have a Sinky or a Becky or a Crystal or Kling, whoever it is, I could name almost anybody on the team, like telling you, hey, that was a great pass or you did great today or, you know, you're crushing it, like that means the world. Then I'm like, whoa, maybe I can do this, you know. Thorin's going to win a 3 nothing. What a fantastic way to start the NWSL regular season. Smith! When you're playing against a team that has nothing to lose, it can be a dangerous game. And, you know, it's it's never easy going, going to New York to play. It was a big game for us, and I was nervous. And I'm like, okay, how do I get out of this? Like, your nervous energy is like the same as excitement energy, so you're like, okay, how do I switch this? How do I switch this? And they really had nothing to lose, so we knew that they were going to come out on their front foot, give everything they had. This was their last game. This is going to be a fight. It's for the shield. The game was back and forth, back and forth, and we could never quite keep them from scoring. Oh, 
tucks it in the corner. Gotham takes the lead. Gosh, I feel like the team um, wasn't our normal brave selves. And because we weren't being ourselves, that's the reason why we tied. We were coming from a place of protecting instead of attacking. But we didn't have anything yet. We didn't earn anything yet. And that was a huge lesson for this group. I think we were all just so disappointed. Um, like it was right there. Like we could kind of sense it. Like we, it was in our hands. But it just wasn't our best team performance. We were just off. And so I would definitely say that the feeling afterward was just, just disappointment. After the Gotham game, we all talked together and we were like, okay guys, like why when we feel this expectation, do we not perform at our level. And yeah, we were up 3-1 in Gotham and still somehow tied because we didn't have control of the game ever. So it was definitely frustrating. It felt like a loss, even though it wasn't. But looking back, I don't know if it was the worst thing that happened to us because I think it just fueled our fire even more going into to playoffs. We just kind of dug in after that. And we're like, you know, it's not about this. It's not about that. It's about being us. And when we're us, we're unstoppable. One thing I love about this team is we never back down from a fight. When San Diego won, it was like, all right, like dream matchup, new team into the league. Let's show them how it's done. And that was our attitude going into it. Like, no, this is this is ours. They're coming into our house. We'll introduce them to the playoffs. Every game we played against them this season has been hard. And we knew it was going to be a fight, but we knew we were going to be at home. We were going to be in front of our, our fans. And we had everything in place for us to have success. We all were like, let's go, like we got this. I was beyond excited. I'm like, Alex Morgan scoring all these goals, like I'm gonna stop her. So it was like really cool, I think, to see everyone like take this challenge like head on and like not be scared. One, two, three, four! Come on! I think semifinals are way more pressured than than the final. I think when you're playing in a semi, you know that your ultimate goal is to get into a final. So you're almost thinking too far ahead of the game. I think we didn't, as a team, start that game off well. Um, there was a lot of just miscommunication, mispasses, things that I was like, this is not like us. I think we're just nervous and uh, maybe taking a game off, obviously, is something that plays into the start of a, a game and getting your feels again. I think soccer just doesn't go the way that you want it to go. That's what's so great about it, it's so unpredictable. And we had planned and prepared four special players and all of a sudden, you know, a few minutes in and you give up a goal that you felt like you shouldn't have given up. Morgan with that left foot, Corniak! San Diego scores! You talked about the height and the ability of Corniak. Two for three goals in the regular season came against this Portland Thorns team. I think we came out with a little bit of nerves. Um, and you can see that because we got scored on. And I was like, okay, everyone's a little bit hesitant. What's going on here? Um, but as soon as they scored, I saw like this switch immediately in the group. As soon as we had kickoff, we ended up in their half and uh, were in, like stayed in it for a prolonged period. And I remember thinking, okay, this isn't the Gotham game. This is us chasing the match and seeing what we can do and being us. And in Portland, a team that's been in this postseason more than anybody else. This is their eighth straight appearance. They only missed one year. I remember the corner kick that we got, played it in, it got headed across, then Hina brings it down on this amazing touch, serves it back in, and they decide to head it directly on a clearance to Rocky Rodriguez, which is, in hindsight, probably the worst thing that they did in their whole season. <laughs> Rodriguez with a ball! strike from Rocky Rodriguez. 
as we started the second half, I, I saw the joy come back into our, our players on the field. I, th I saw us connecting. I saw, to, saw us really working with each other. Um, and I think that that gave me a little bit more confidence when my name was called to, to get ready to go into the game. I was like, okay, well, the game is now in a place where I want to step onto this field. Certainly knocking. It wasn't coming for us, you know, at first, especially, I think, toward the end of regulation in the second half. We were knocking on the door, we were getting in the box, we were pushing for it, but it wasn't going in. I'm like, okay, come on, like, we, one of these is bound to go in, it's coming, it's coming. Like, you could just feel a goal coming, like, that second half, especially the last 10 minutes, like, we were just going. And then she hit, like, a, another banger, and you're like, what just happened? Fourth quarter kick of the second half for the Thorns. Six in the match. Header is not a down. Follow up from Dan! Seeing it sail into the net, I like my heart like dropped. You know, I think like one, there was a huge, massive just feeling of relief of like, wow, Crystal, like you still got it, like you are okay. Um, you know, and I think when you've been out of the game for a long time, you it's not like there's doubt, but it's like you're you're working way back into the game again. I feel like it was a collective, I don't know, like volcano explosion. It was insane, and. I think that the city felt a lot of the same emotions that we were feeling too. Just like all this pent up anger, sadness, joy, surprise, <laughs> all of it. We It was all of those things all at once and it wasn't just us feeling it, it was our city and our fans feeling it too and it was such a cool moment for Rose City and it's definitely the coolest one that I've been a part of since being here. I think we all just felt overjoyed after the game too and we could just like feel the crowd support around us. I think even on the field like I could sense how much they were behind us but I think you know when hearing the whistle blow and it's happening we're going to the final like we could just feel the joy in the stadium so I just felt so so privileged to be a part of it and obviously so excited then for what was for what was to come. Get a minute, don't know. I was telling Sam Coffee, I know you're a rookie and all, but I just want to let you know that these don't come around very often. They're rare and special. And I told her, I was like, soak it up. It's it's something that should be enjoyed. And so I think our team went into it with the mindset of being like, you know what, we want to just enjoy this as much as possible. Soak it all in. This is the last time we get to play together this year. We might not have the same group next year because that's just how pro soccer works. And it's basically a celebration of our journey. Preparation for the final, it was fun, it was lively, it was loose. You know, I, I thought that on the field, um, it was kind of like this safe haven where everyone could kind of just finally breathe and be like, ah, yes, like this is why we're here. The training vibes were, were not what I expected. Like, it was cool to see how calm everyone was. The next day, we were about to play in a championship game, but we were having fun, joking around, obviously still getting done what we needed to get get done, but it was very calm. And I think that says a lot about this team. I think it says a lot about the confidence and the belief that everyone had. It was a really cool feeling because it put everyone at peace. I've been pretty fortunate in my career to play in some big games, and whether it's NWSL, whether World Cup, Olympics, things like that. But yeah, finals never get old. I think you could probably ask Becky the same and Crystal that the way the NWSL has grown, every final is something new. 
yes, I had been to three previous ones, but this was a completely different experience just because of the growth of the game, it being on prime time and the atmosphere surrounding the game and everything that was done in the build up to the game. It was different. Portland looking for a third NWSL championship. They've been here before, but come on, this Kansas City team in their second year, fresh off two playoff wins on the road, yeah. coming in with a ton of energy. I mean, honestly, this is a dream matchup. for. Obviously, it's a team that we had played somewhat recently, and it's a team that we felt like we should have beat. You know, obviously, they had a, a stoppage time equalizer against us, and so I, I personally felt excited that we were going to face them again because I was like, we, we owe this team a little bit. Kansas City had this team of destiny feel to them. They were last place last year and all of a sudden they're in the final. I thought like, okay, they think that they maybe have this because they have so much momentum. And I was like, we should play into that. Like we are gonna ruin your party and we're okay doing that. We don't attract what we want, we attract what we are. That means be joy, be love, be bravery, and be you. Because joy, love, bravery, and you equal success. I think they played exactly how our staff expected them to. In a final, there's obviously always going to be a, like an extra sense of nerves, but our team, we came out flying. It reminded me of our opening game of the season against Kansas City at home, where we were just unstoppable. Anytime like we're on a fast break, I don't really care how many defenders there are. If there is space in behind, I want the ball, and my teammates know I want the ball. So Yaz played a great through ball. Fortunately, you know, it fell to me, and whenever I see a 1v1 with the keeper, I'm it's exciting. Smith one on one, put it away! We knew we needed to come out, start on the front foot and get the first goal because that would decide a lot about how the rest of the game went. So it was, it was a good feeling, I think, for everyone. It's like, okay, like we're here, this is our game. One of the like really fun things I think about flow and collective flow, if you get lucky with your entire team, is that the game starts to slow down a bit. And I felt like for our team, there were long stretches of the match where the game actually like slowed down and you could just like see our team making really good decisions. So it's, it's nice to be up two goals in the last minute of the game because you know you're going to win. Um, so I remember seeing the ref like put the whistle to her mouth. I'm like, yeah, it's happening. And just, I don't know. It, I have no idea what happened. Um, but just the sense of this season, this year, being able to achieve this moment with this group, players, staff, the organization, the fans, and just all let it all out and just like being able to have those moments with individual players and look them in the eye and like we did this. It was a tough year. There were a lot of low lows and a lot of things that we had to deal with and are still dealing with and processing off the field. And then you obviously have your job on the field and there were some really highs and lows on the field as well. But the fact that we always came back kicking, we always came back together. So the fortitude to, to find one another and to find strength in one another and to somehow get the job done, you know, the regular season, missing out on the shield by one point and the hurt from that, but learning from that and taking that into the playoffs and the way that we won that semi and the way we went into that final that that's resiliency I think how we came back and we came back even better for it I think kind of encapsulates this this team in this season.